I'm supposed to be meeting some Chinese cop from Hong Kong. I'm Carter. Carter? Detective Carter. No, you ain't. Captain, this is Detective Lee. No, you ain't. Man, this dude is off the chain. No, you ain't. You know, in a modern day Hollywood full of reboots and unwanted sequels, it's rare that you'll find one that's actually decent. I can say this is not one of those times. Released in 2016, the Rush Hour TV series is a soft reboot of the film trilogy starring Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker. Now, one question that gets asked all the time with this is, who asked for this? I don't know! Well, nobody but the corporate suits don't have any ideas and would rather dig up the graves of dead franchises to make a quick buck. Hey, I got an idea. How about we reboot the Rush Hour franchise? Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys hear yourselves? This is the same old crap over and over again. We need to take a chance. Try something different. Something fresh. Brutality. Rush Hour 3 came out in 2007, and fans have been waiting patiently to see if we'll ever get a fourth movie. And truth be told, I'm not interested in a fourth movie. Rush Hour 3 was kind of booty. <laughs> it had its moments, but overall, I'd rather just watch the first two. And Jackie Chan is super old, man. He can't move like he used to. Don't have my guy out here looking like Harrison Ford, all right? <laughs> that got that man going all sad right now. Anyway, this is a review of the first episode of the TV series and only the first episode because I wasn't compelled to watch any more than that. So what we have here is the first Rush Hour movie with elements of the second movie condensed into 45 minutes. A very dry 45 minutes. The episode opens up with the same scene from the first movie. Detective Lee is coming down on a drug bus by the docks. Lee is played by John Fu who was in that Tekken movie that nobody saw. Instead of protecting a little girl, Lee now has a sister, Kim, who he's overprotective of, much to her chagrin. Here is where I need to address two of the biggest problems with this show. Let's start with the fight scenes. They're awful. All of the fight scenes are so choppy and cut to hell, you can't appreciate what the actors are doing. And it, it really just makes you miss Jackie Chan's over the top, impeccable stunt work. I really miss my nigga. After busting Quintao instead of Juntao, Lee sends Kim to Los Angeles to help deliver ancient Chinese statues. Meanwhile, over in LA, we meet Detective Carter, played by Justin Hires. And between both actors, Hires definitely got the short end of the stick. Second biggest problem in this show, the comedy. Chris Tucker's brand of comedy is untouchable. It's damn near impossible to match his charisma. And to Hires' credit, he knew that. He didn't wanna be or try to imitate Chris Tucker. He just came in and try to do his own thing. I can respect that. But when you listen to him talk, all you're going to hear is Chris Tucker. It don't even matter, man. I'm late, you late, it don't matter, man. Let's come on, let's do this. Put that gun, put that gun away, man. How many people you don't kill this year? This is nice. Is this from the future? Did you get this off a storm trooper? Hey! Ah, scared your ass. As well, Jackie Chan brings his own brand of comedy, which is lacking with Fu's version of the character. And I don't really mind it, which I'll explain a little bit. So Carter's introduction is similar to the originals where street cops interrupt his undercover gun deal. This leads to Carter hanging onto a helicopter, flying through the city, and ends with him shooting the pilot and crashing it into a greenhouse. By the airport, Kim's team gets intercepted by Quintal disguised as security officers. They're led by Fong, played by Byron Mann, an OG in the martial arts film industry. Unfortunately, he's not as intimidating or cool as Ken Leung. The Hong Tong Redo! 
the Hong Kong team is killed except for Kim and we're led to believe that you know they got her too. Lee comes to America to solve the mystery of his missing statues and sister which leads to him teaming with Carter for the time being. The chemistry between the two is non-existent. In fact instead of coming up with their own funny lines they just blatantly steal the iconic ones from the first movie. And what are you doing? You're not even supposed to speak English. I never said I don't speak English. I let people talk who like to talk. Makes it easier to find out how full of crap they are. Oh, hell no! In fact, John Fu is the complete opposite of Jackie Chan, bringing a more serious and dried humored death to the lead character. I kind of like it. You know, like he's a badass and he knows it. And he looks at Carter as inferior to him making jokes at Carter's expense. Okay, so you scared too? No, but it's okay that you are. I remember being scared once, as a small child. You ain't funny. The main reason I don't like the Carter character here is that they make him too much of a clown. To the point where no one in the show really respects him, they just kind of tolerate him. So when the show wants to get melodramatic, I can't take him seriously. You and Carter are a lot alike. No, you ain't. Lee and Carter follow a trail of clues that'll lead them to the statues. One of Carter's connections is his cousin, with Paige Kennedy taking the role of Clifton Powell's character. Mr. Kennedy! And Bobby Lashley is here for some reason, like, <laughs> what the fuck? They redo the pool hall fight scene and it's not good. The next Lee is a security guard who gets assassinated by Fong and we find out that Kim is alive and working for Quintel. Carter also calls Fong Eminem, which would have made more sense with Young's character, but whatever. After a shootout in the Noodle House, Carter is demoted and Lee is called back to Hong Kong. Carter ends up getting another lead from the chick from the George Lopez show and they question the gun dealer from earlier. Oh, you look like a motherfucking <laughs> He leads them to an abandoned mall where the last action scene takes place. Fong is killed off and this one cop was leading Kwon Tao, but that don't matter. Kim is here and yet despite every Asian person being dead and the gang leader knocked unconscious, she refuses to tell Lee why she joined the enemy gang. Sister, why did you do this? I'm sorry brother, but it's only the first episode. I must wait until the series finale. And she just leaves like, <laughs> like I Lee is offered a full-time job in Los Angeles, becoming Carter's permanent partner, where they'll do funny stuff and catch bad guys. I, I don't know, nor do I care. Overall, Rush Hour the TV show is a below average buddy cop comedy. Like I said, I wasn't interested in finishing a 13 episode series, and neither was anyone else, since it was canceled mid-season and nothing of value was lost. And to debunk anybody coming in with that, why can't you watch it as its own thing? Why do you gotta compare it to the original? Just turn your brain off and watch it. Blah, 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 blah. For starters, when you choose to do a reboot and you create a new character, whether it's bad or good, I can say they tried something different. But when you bring in a different actor to play a character we have spent years knowing and loving. Not only are you handicapping your project, but the actors are put into a situation where they're held to a standard that's damn near impossible to reach. For example, did you guys know there was a Transporter 4? What? Yeah, and Jason Statham is not in it, but the actor they did get is playing the same character. Despite in Transporter 3, they established that there are other Transporters in this universe. So why not make him a different Transporter? It's... <sighs> they want us to accept stand-ins as the real thing. No. And to follow up on that, the reason buddy cop movies work is because you have great actors who make the movie their own. Bad Boys, 21 Jump Street, 
Hot Fuzz, Lethal Weapon, Ride Along, The Nice Guys, which is very funny and I highly recommend. If you replace any of the actors in these movies, they don't work. Jackie Chan is Rush Hour. Chris Tucker is Rush Hour. And we will accept no replacements. End of discussion. I'm done. And that was the Rush Hour TV show. It merely exists. If you guys like this, then I'll look for more obscure TV shows to review. And with that, y'all stay frosty. I'm out.